I am uh, Caleb Henderson. I'm a technology education teacher uh, at Marshfield High School. Hi, I'm Trevor Meyer. I am a student here at Marshfield High School and I am a junior. My name is Owen Siegel. I am also a junior at Marshfield High School. I've been a SkillsUSA advisor here at the high school for the last probably 12 years. When I heard that there was a drone competition, I was thrilled because I myself have never really done anything with drones and we had talked about having a class um, here at the high school for several years now. So the DOT grant allowed us to have a $1,200 drone through Lab Midwest and Mind's Eye, which is a, a great entry-level drone. Everything was there, everything was laid out, and that's exactly what I needed because I had never had really any experiences. To have uh, that opportunity to have something laid out and all the motors picked out for you and, and the, um, the radio controller and all that stuff, it was just an excellent opportunity for a newbie like me. After we got done with regionals, uh, I was flying it in the auto tech area and I crashed the drone. So then went over to Trevor and I'm like, it's broke. And then we just decided to remake the whole frame so that it wouldn't break ever. I really encourage innovation and invention in my classroom. The students you know, that want to do great things will do great things. I've been really lucky as an instructor to find students that that do that kind of, you know, self-motivation type stuff. I encourage it 100%. So the Mind's Eye drone uses um, just standard props. Uh, we opted for these because they're easier to 3D print. So with our arms, we started, actually had a, we had a longer length because we figured that would be easier to control. We ended up opting for the smaller ones later because um, make the drone smaller because we thought we were gonna fly through a hoop. So it'd be less space restrictive. Um, you can see here they have the holes for the pop rivets for the Mind's Eye pop rivets and then we have a cable slot here for cable management so the, the cable slot perfectly in there and then they actually feed into the, uh, the drone body here. The way they lock in is this geometry fits perfectly in with the, uh, the main frame so that it doesn't wiggle around at all. You can actually take the arm out without removing any of the main components so you don't have to redo all the cable management for the inside if you want to replace an arm. It's actually pretty similar to the, the Mind's Eye drone in terms of the layout. All the, it has a square frame. Um, we base the shapes of the actual body off of the original Mind's Eye platform. We just try to make it a little bit more modular and quite a bit stronger. In the process of building it, to incorporate the arms that we had designed, we needed to build a whole different body. So when we were trying to figure out what materials to use for the drone frame, we did some stress testing using a truss tester. It's basically just a machine that pulls down on an object. Uh, we used these prints, which are just little blocks of PLA, and we di tried different brands and uh, even powdered nylon, and we did it at different infills to see what strength they are. So when you print out a nylon, it's printed in a powdered form. Uh, you can even machine it afterwards. As you can see here, this is turned on a lathe. Uh, with PLA, it's uh, printed kind of like a grain in a wood, so it's only strong in the one direction, but not in another. So they have different pros and cons. After testing, we found the best solution for our needs was to do like a gyroid with 20% infill. It wasn't the strongest strength to weight ratio wise, but we didn't need it to be insanely strong. We did test the arms and they held like 150 pounds. So it was more than strong enough to support the loads from a crash. So we started with like this top plate here um, and we, we based that off of the mind's eye design. Um, it has the same spots for screw holes and but we opted for bolts instead of uh, the pop rivets and they just thread straight into the PLA with a perfect tolerance. And then on the bottom here, we have landing gear, which are optimized to be, um, be able to survive any forces from any crashes. So if it lands at an angle, this will stop that. Um, and it has holes to save weight and for heating issues with the battery. Like with any engineering project, you run into these unexpected problems and um, because of this, throughout the process, we had a couple different designs that we went through and changed the design to fix those problems. Just the design process, trying something, failing, and then making it better. This is our, our second model, or our second version of the drone frame. We have a third drone frame um, already made <laughs> for uh, the capstone class as a trainer drone. It's indestructible, but <laughs> um, just Getting used to the idea of not succeeding right away all the time, not finding the answer and trying to 
work through the process to get the answers yourself instead of just relying on someone to tell you. Yeah, you're definitely working on critical thinking skills and um, coming back to the same thing even though you know it's not going to really have a different result. But eventually you'll strike that one thing that'll be like, Eureka, that's the moment that you figure out um, what the problem was. And it was just an excellent opportunity for us to use the engineering process, uh, problem solve and troubleshoot through using our measurement tools and all that kind of stuff and actually put something together that we could 3D print and get it flying. It was just a great opportunity to put some real world experience behind what we do in the classroom. I would definitely recommend that as a teacher, uh, you get involved with this. Uh, drone technology is a great way to incorporate all of our different bits and pieces of curriculum that we do through engineering education. Um, and it just sort of brings it all together, the design, the, the problem solving, troubleshooting, programming. There's so many different things that we can integrate in with drones. There's a lot more that's translated into career-oriented skills that we're learning and, and using in, in school and um, later on in their careers down the road. So in terms of like the drone industry, it's not just piloting. There's so much more to it. There's like engineers, you could be a software engineer, you could be mechanical, aerospace, they all can work towards it. Um, and then even for flying, there's so many different areas. There's agriculture, there's oil industry. There's civil engineering, like so many things you would never think about that you could use for drones. Our administration has always been really proud of our work in Skills USA and Robotics Club and all these different areas. Our field has always been a proponent of these, uh, these types of competitions. It's one of those happy feelings that as an educator, not every single student is going to succeed to the level that you would hope. And uh, to have you know, students that are motivated uh, to do the engineering process is just phenomenal. I mean, to see them go through the process and um, do the things that you did in class for a real world experience uh, and competition is just great. I have confidence that our, the drone competition will go better for us next year as we realize studying the written material was probably a better idea than we had previously thought. Um, but it was still a very enjoyable experience and I, I hope to do well next year. I definitely think we can win next year. I have really high hopes and I think, uh, my, yeah, they're gonna do great.